There we go. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, Commissioner Wilson. Yeah. I'm sorry. Vice Chair Wilson, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Commissioner Koch. Here. Yeah. Commissioner Chunk. Here. Commissioner Sill. Here. And Chair Ross. Here. Thank you, Laura. And welcome everyone who, who's joining us to the September 13th, 2021 meeting of Portola Valley's architectural site in uh, architectural and site control commission meeting. Um, we started out with uh, three items of business on our agenda, and that has been modified. So I just want to start out by mentioning that um, item one is being deferred by joint agreement of the applicant and staff to a future meeting date. So we will not be hearing uh, item one, which is um, landscape revisions to an approved plan at 228 Westridge Drive. So uh, with that, an oral communications and invite any members of the public who would like to address us on a topic that is not on, on today's agenda to speak now. And uh, if you're listening in and uh, raise your hand with the Zoom function, Laura will call on you. And I am not seeing any um, hands up for oral communications. All right, we'll give it another few seconds. Okay, somebody still with the button. And I am not seeing any. All right, I'll close oral communications and move to new business. We'll start with item two on the agenda which is architectural and site development review of a 560 square foot addition, remodel of an existing residence and landscape improvements at 150 Stonegate Road, the Wilson residence. And looks like, is it Suzanne that's going to give a uh, presentation? Suzanne is supposed to give the presentation. I'm afraid that something may be wrong. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I don't know where she is. I that is very unusual. It looks um, like coming up. Here she comes. Here she okay, is. good. I'm just. I was just afraid something bad had happened. That's where my <laughs> mind goes, unfortunately, sometimes. Um, so we could just well, give us were, a second to regroup. I apologize. Sure. You were vamping until red, and now it looks like we're about ready. <laughs> um. So Suzanne, are you there? Yes. Okay, great. great. Um, your your item is up. The first one was continued on the agenda, so. Oh, okay, sorry about that. I wasn't in any hurry because I thought I had an item in front of my. <laughs> oh, you made it just in time. I just introduced the item and then you checked in, so. Excellent, okay, let me pull up the presentation then. So thanks everyone for your patience. Okay, can everybody see my screen or do I, I don't see a share screen button here. Um, we don't even see you. Okay, yeah, sorry, I don't have a, let me fix that. And while we're getting that up, are all members of the applicant team here for that project? Whoever is a representative of that project, can you just confirm? Because sometimes people are in the attendees instead of the panelists. The architect is here. Okay. And yeah, Katie, uh, Katie and Ted Wilson are the uh, owners applicants. 
Great. Right. Chris Balding is the architect and they are present. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I'm just having trouble uh, getting the, we had this trouble at the last meeting. <laughs> my um, presentation, I don't see a button for sharing my screen. Um, so thank you for your patience, everybody. Are you able to turn on your video? I should be able to, let's see. Yeah, the settings are right. All panelists um, can share their screen. Okay. All right, great. So I'll maybe- Okay, now we've got you. Yeah, maybe that was the issue. <laughs> We have Judith. <laughs> and while we have a moment, um, Jeff Alves. Oh, is he said he was going to be just a little bit late. So here he is. <laughs> hmm. I don't have a button that says this to uh, share my screen. And that's why my, and usually it's right at the bottom, right? Yep, right at the bottom in the middle, usually. Yeah, but make sure your mouse is floating around in the middle of space somewhere so they'll, they'll show up on the bottom. If you have it way over to the side, you'll just see blank. Yeah. Um, like if you have two screens, if it's on the wrong screen, you won't get anything. Hmm. I lose it all the time. <laughs> this is very frustrating. I'm not seeing the... I am not seeing the button. Did you log in as um, a panelist or? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, I, Suzanne, is it the presentation you emailed me earlier? Do you want me to try to pull it up? Yes, please. Okay, sorry, everyone. Give me a second. That's why I sent it to you because we had this, I know we had this trouble at the last meeting and I, I purposely uh, disconnected my laptop from my uh, other screen because I, I thought that might've been the issue. Suzanne, are you using a Macintosh? No, I'm using a uh, Dell. Okay, and I can't. And I've, and I've been able to do it previously, so I don't know what happened, why it's uh, not cooperating. Uh, on a Mac, if you <laughs> on the shift Because you know, at prior meetings, it's worked. <laughs> on a Mac, if you hold on the shift and command keys and type for screen sharing. I don't know if it's the same on a Dell. Shift command S. Okay, I should have it just a second. Okay. Okay, so we'll go a little bit the old fashioned way and Suzanne can um, tell me to advance the slides. So does that look okay, okay to everyone? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, that's what we had to do before. <laughs> Sorry, everyone, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your patience, everybody. Okay, so um, this is an architectural review for an additional remodel of an existing residence. Um, there are some uh, site improvements, including some new hardscape and decking and uh, landscape that will be a part of the project. Okay, you can move it forward, Laura. So uh, there is a 680 square foot addition to the south end of the house. And this is for a master bedroom suite. Uh, they're adding a new front entry. And uh, as I mentioned previously, there'll be some walkways, uh, some decking at the rear that's being replaced and new landscaping. Uh, the landscaping is around the periphery of the house and the rear yard uh, open space areas. Okay, next slide, please. So here's the location. Uh, the property is all the way at the end of Stonegate Road. Uh, the rear property line abuts Portola Road. So uh, most of the surrounding properties are developed with single family homes and uh, across the road um, on the opposite side of Portola Road is the Windy Hill open space. 
this property zoned the RE1A, SD1A. It's a one acre in size and the average slope, which I can't see because <laughs> it's underneath my uh, panel. It's a, I think it's about 13% if I read mm -hmm. correctly. Um, next slide, please. So here's the uh, property. The uh, end of the, the garage end of the house actually encroaches a little bit into the front setback. This is an existing non-conforming situation. Uh, there's not anything uh, that's gonna really be happening down there at the garage end other than some new windows are gonna be uh, put in. Uh, those, uh, there are four parking spaces, two in the garage, two in the driveway. And the additions are shown in green. So that uh, large addition at the end of the house is the bedroom addition. And then the little one in front is the front entry. Next slide, please. So uh, the project is within the allowable floor area, uh, development or maximum uh, impervious. Um, the existing height on the residence is from, at, from the low to high point right now is 17.6. Um, and so that will stay the maximum height for the residence. Um, nothing's changing with the access parking backup area. That's all staying the same. Uh, there, the addition uh, is compliant with setbacks as well and um, leaves ample floor and impervious coverage for any future projects. And you can see the two additions outlined on the floor plan there in uh, blue. Uh, next slide, please. So as I mentioned, impervious services, uh, they're, they're adding a small amount. It's going from 45, 25 square feet to 5,074 square feet, which still leaves them a surplus of 2,674. Next slide. Uh, here's the sections, uh, and it shows both the addition of the bedroom and the front entry. Uh, and you can see the, the heights stay in the same. Uh, next slide. Uh, so here's the front elevation. The top elevation is the new, and the lower one is the old. So you can see the two additions with the blue lines underneath them. Um, and there are a few changes to windows and doorways on this elevation. Next slide. This is the rear elevation. Uh, the, really the only thing that's being changed are some doors and windows. And you can again see on the right side of the top elevation, the, the bedroom addition. Next slide. Here are the two side elevations. Uh, so you can see the, um, the chimney on that end of the house is going away. The uh, bedroom additions popping out. Um, and then there's a few changes to uh, windows as well. Next slide. Uh, so here's the roof plan. The gray shaded areas are the new roof area. And um, there, there's one skylight being added. It's two and a half by two and a half. Um, and then that oval area is showing two skylights uh, that are pre, those are already there. One stain and one is being removed. Next slide. Oh, and also there's a little area for uh, solar panels there on the uh, roof area over the master bedroom addition. Um, next slide. So here's the, here's the existing materials that uh, the owners were going to match. Uh, su subsequent to submittal of the application and processing and scheduling for hearing, uh, they, they let me know that they've considered replacing the uh, composition shingle roof with a metal roof for fire safety. Um, so far, uh, they're hoping they can fit it into their budget. So I wanted to present both materials to the ASCC and hope, hopefully you can uh, approve both uh, the existing roof material being matched and or being replaced by the metal roof. And if the owners are able to work it into their budget, then they would, would prefer to go with the metal roofing. Uh, so you can see they're both very dark colors, very low uh, uh, reflectivity values on them. The uh, siding is, is just being matched and the wood windows are, you know, the wood frame windows and um, everything else just matching existing materials. Next slide. So these are the landscape lights. The uh, purple dots are low level path lights and the pink are step lights that are built into the steps. So in three locations, these dots kind of cover them. Two of the locations have three step lights and then the other three are just individual one step uh, light in each one. Uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, this is the exterior house lighting. There is a recessed light in the front entry. And then those blue dots are the new uh, wall sconces that are down directed. Uh, the three yellow dots are, are existing lights. Uh, they're also a down directed wall light. Um, they're already in place. Next slide, please. Uh, here's the landscape plan. Um, they are proposing some new trees, uh, primarily in the area down around the existing sport court. Um, there's a couple of other new trees proposed. Uh, the rest is uh, shrubs and perennials. Uh, the water usage is about 60% 60 60 of what's allowed for the property. So they're well under the budget for uh, landscape water efficiency. All the species that are proposed are low water using. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, public comments. We uh, sent out notices to neighbors within 300 feet of the site or property owners. Uh, we, uh, one email was received from uh, the owners of 115 Stonegate in support of the project, and those were the only public comments received. Next slide, please. Uh, so um, staff has determined that the project conforms to the zoning requirements, uh, design guidelines, uh, and the project is categorically exempt from CEQA under two different provisions, one for exterior alterations and one for additions to structures, and we are recommending approval of the architectural review permit subject to the conditions in attachment one. Next slide. I just wanted to introduce the project team. Uh, Ted and Katie Wilson are the property owners, applicants. Uh, Chris Spalding is the architect, and Jim Redmond is the landscape architect. Um, uh, Ted and Katie and Chris are all in attendance. I'm not sure if Jim is. Uh, so with that, uh, that ends the presentation. I do have slides in here if you need them for a uh, reminder on um, the findings for design guideline compliance and uh, for approval of the permit. But there, we uh, did provide draft findings in the, your staff report. So um, if that uh, ends my presentation and I'm available if you have any questions. Thank you, Suzanne. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Suzanne after the presentation? I don't. Or for no Laura. questions for me. Nope. Right. Kenny? Doesn't sound like it. Megan? No. Okay, good. Well, thank you, Suzanne. Um, is someone from the uh, applicant team Yes, uh -huh. I, I can I start. Make a presentation. Great. I can I can start. Um, this is kind of a refreshing project where we have uh, uh, a project with a, a nice ranch house that's not being torn down but being uh, fixed up for the next generation, and doesn't max out all the limitations. So um, uh, I I appreciate that. I don't know if you do as much as I do. I, and I don't see anything controversial about this project at all. So um, I'll I'll shut up, and but I'll be here if you have questions for me. Okay. I think Katie or, and uh, wanted to say something. Thank you, Chris. Katie, go ahead. Hi, all. I just wanted to add that um, we're really excited about this project. We have three young children, and this will allow us to have each of our children have their own bedroom and just really improve our hopefully long um, quality of life here in Portola Valley. Great, thank you. <laughs> Excuse me, commissioners, any questions for the applicants? Or the architect? Me. No, not for me. Doesn't look like it. Okay, with that, I will uh, open oral communications for this agenda item and invite anybody from the public who would like to address us on this application. If you raise your hand virtually, Laura will call on you. I'm not seeing any hands up so far. Okay. Great, well, I'll close oral communications. If somebody shows up, uh, you know, we're taking this item a little earlier than most would have expected. Uh, if somebody checks in at some point, uh, Laura, just let us know. Um, all right, closing oral communications and coming to commissioners for discussion. Um, Al, do you have anything to kick us off with? Sure. Um, 
yeah, I, I think that there's just lots to like about this project. Um, uh, just as Chris said, I, I think that, uh, you know, I can really appreciate that taking a, a nice mature house and uh, fixing it up instead of tearing it down is, is refreshing to see. And this, uh, the proposal looks to me like it'll really, uh, really give the house a nice feel. It seems like it's gonna balance things out a little bit. The entry really looks good and then uh, makes a lot of sense to um, have a nice master bedroom. And, uh, and so just the general appearance of the house looks to me like uh, it's gonna, uh, you know, have a little bit more pizzazz and uh, quite nice. Um, and uh, it's great to see that, you know, not everything's maxed out. Um, the, uh, um, you know, it looks to me like a lot of, a lot of different things have been considered quite well. I, I think that the lighting uh, is a nice proposal. It seems like it's kind of a light touch. Um, you know, there's a couple of things that, that I'm not wild about, but, uh, you know, I can understand why the decisions were made. I'm not uh, a big fan of lawns, and I see that you've got a lawn already and that you're planning on keeping it. Um, you know, I understand that's the way the rules are, so I won't make a big deal about it. Um, and I, I think that your decision to continue on with wood siding may be a little short-sighted. I understand why you would do it. Um, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a little concerned that a few years down the road, you're going to find that you might have some issues with insurance um, as more and more insurance companies decide that they don't want to insure houses with wood siding. But uh, I, I certainly understand. And given the way the rules are to now, now I'm not going to I'm not going to um, uh, vote against the project because of that choice. But uh, really, uh, the one other thing. I, I feel like the uh, the trees along the sports court are just a little bit too much in a in a line. I guess I'd like to see them spaced a little bit more randomly, um, so that you get the screening that you want, but that it's not just a kind of an unnatural looking line of of shrubs. Um, but really, I, I think that the the proposal is, is extremely well thought out, and uh, and I'm 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 very much in support of it. Thank you, Bob. Uh, um, Megan. Yeah, so I agree with Al. Um, I think this is a smart project taking um, a wonderful ranch home and just emphasizing its beauty with a new entrance and master suite makes perfect sense to me. Um, and I certainly could support either roof material. I would lean towards the metal roof, as you know, for insurance, that will be um, a wonderful benefit for you. And it also could um, help provide an easier fit for photovoltaics. If you want to do more than what you have suggested on your plan, um, you could maybe even just be a uh, net zero there for pg e which would be great. Um, as we all know, I think the landscaping plan looks nice. I think the lighting is just right for the site. Um, if you wanted to make this master bedroom uh, a stucco or stone, that maybe could mitigate something, but I, I realize you're not going to redo the siding of the entire project on just this um, this uh, remodel. So, but I think it's a great project and it'll be a wonderful family home. Thanks, Megan. Uh, Kenny, do you have any comments to offer? Oh, Kenny's muted. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. There you go. Um, I, I mostly just want to um, echo what um, Megan and Al said. Uh, I'm I'm happy to um, go with the staff's recommendation to um, including um, either the existing composition roofing material and the metal roofing. Um, uh, I think for the reasons that the the applicants are considering metal roofing. Um, uh, we would maybe not be doing our role if we weren't suggesting a non-combustible siding as well. Um, and given that you you have 
it looks like you have painted siding. Um, it you you shouldn't have much trouble matching the look um, of the rest of your siding, but with a non-combustible material. Um, uh, and uh, what we don't want is for 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 you to to think to yourself that you wish somebody had had warned you about the non-combustible material thing. Uh, in particular, because we have um, what appears to be likely approval of uh, actual policy that that new projects, new construction has to use non-combustible material. Um, and of course, there's a discussion about um, that affecting insurance. Um, beyond that, um, I, I appreciate that um, that you're not doing a teardown. Um, you're fixing up what you have. Great. Thank you, Kenny. Ms. Wilson, mm -hmm. Jane, do you have comments? Yes, and to say that I'm no relation. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> uh, right. I very much appreciate that you have um, redesigned your home within the maximum square footage allowance, within the maximum impervious surface, and that you're not at the max height on the roof. This is all great. Um, I also concur with the conservation's recommendations, re the removal of the Douglas fir and the acacia. And I think that their suggestion that the 24 inch box size reduced to 15 gallon is a good one because it's better to allow the plants to grow into their areas um, and into their spaces rather than plant over plant to start with. Um, I'd like to reiterate the other commissioners' comments about non-combustible materials for the siding, but um, now that we've all said it, I think that might be something you, you do want to consider or look at. Um, and I did see that the conservation wanted to discourage a red hot poker, but I couldn't plant, but I couldn't find that on the plans when I looked, but um, that, would, that was just one, one small thing. But other than that, I think it's a good redesign. I think you'll be very happy with the, with the work that you're going to be doing and that you're fitting in with the Portola Valley ideas and thoughts. Right, thank you. Thank you, Jane. Uh, well, my colleagues have pretty much said it all. It's an excellent proposal. Uh, very much in keeping with the existing site and architecture. I think uh, after built a few years from now, it'll be very difficult for anybody to know that it was an addition to the house. It, it's very organic that way. Uh, I won't repeat the concerns about uh, combustible siding materials. You've heard it. Um, I, I will mention though that uh, EPA decking, well, it is more fire resistant than say redwood or cedar, uh, is also combustible. And since that deck appears to be relatively close to grade, there might be other ways to deal with it with an entirely non-combustible material. Uh, just something that uh, I think if you wanted to look at that, I would be very happy um, having that simply reviewed by staff if it were to come back in and not have to go through this difficult process again. Um, so something to think about uh, with ePay. It's also, as you've probably discovered, pretty expensive material uh, and it um, might provide you with a budget to uh, do other things if you uh, had an alternate approach for that deck. But, uh, as far as I'm concerned, either roofing material is just fine. Um, the tree removal is fine. Uh, I, I agree with Al, it'd be nice to stagger the planting of the new trees a little bit, just to provide a little bit less uh, formal or uh, hedge-like look to it. But it's, um, it's not at a place that it's going to really bother any member of the public, as far as I can tell. So it's, it's not a big deal to me. But um, uh, again, overall, a uh, uh, very well done application. And I think um, 
with that, I'll just check with Laura one more time to see if anybody from the public has checked in. No. All right. Um, I think we're ready to entertain a motion. Okay, I move that we uh, approve the project with the uh, conditions outlined um, in the packet. I'll second. All right, and with that motion and second, uh, would you be willing to consider the addition of a, a condition that says if um, an alternate decking material was chosen, it could be simply a staff review? Yeah, I, we should uh, we should say that, and also either roofing material would be acceptable, composition or metal. Yes. Okay. Good. Those modifications. Uh, is there any other proposed modification to the motion? Doesn't look like it. So let's take a vote. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? None, and no absences. So that passes five to zero. Congratulations. Good luck with your project. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Full speed ahead. <laughs> okay. Let's get back to the agenda here. And it looks like our next item up is item three of new business. That is an architectural and site development review of a new residence, landscape improvements, and removal of significant trees, 214 Grove Drive, the Holmes residence. And uh, Jake Garcia has a presentation on this one. Also, I'll mention, and I hope everybody got a chance to see that we had some uh, fairly late breaking public input, uh, public comment that uh, came in the form of a memo, I think distributed this afternoon. Maybe it was late morning. But with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Jake and Laura. Great. Thank you, Chair. Um, and good evening. The item before you tonight. Oh, excuse me. Let me share my screen before I jump into this presentation. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, the item before you tonight is a request for consideration to recommend project approval to the Planning Commission for an architectural review and site development permit for new residents, major landscape improvements and significant tree removal at 214 Grove Drive. Uh, the 70,567 square foot lot is zoned residential estate and is a corner lot located at the intersection of Grove Drive and Grove Drive. The property is surrounded on all sides by single family residential located in the same zoning district. And the lot is moderately sloped and located upslope from, upslope from Grove Drive. There is an existing main residence, detached garage, and detached guest house. The main residence, detached garage, and driveway is proposed for demolition. The detached guest house is proposed to remain. There are 11 significant trees also proposed for removal, and it will be described in more detail on a later slide. The applicant is proposing a new 4,060 square foot residence consisting of two stories and an attached garage. The proposed residence would comply with the overall allowed floor area and the maximum allowed 85% uh, floor area for the site. The proposed project consists of major landscape improvements, including moving the existing driveway, driveway from Grove Drive west of the main residence to Grove Drive north of the main residence. The landscape improvements include a new deck, a trellis, a plunge pool, site paths, retaining walls, and deer fencing. Landscape planting would consist mostly of native plants grouped naturally throughout the site. Landscape uh, planting uh, or 
excuse me, um, the project site uh, development permit triggers ASCC review and the property also seeks a separate entitlement for the modification to the town's ground potential movement potential map. The Planning Commission is the decision making body for map modifications, so the ASCC will make a recommendation to the Planning Commission on the architectural and site development review components of this project. Uh, first off is the uh, elevations. Here's the front elevation shown from the view of the new driveway. Here's the left elevation, which shows the entrance to the garage and the second story above. The right elevation, which is oriented toward the street corner. And the rear elevation, which faces the grow, grow drive to the east, the prior front of the main residence. The proposed materials and colors would be consistent with the town's design guidelines and include exterior wall finishes of uh, gray ashwood siding, dark wood fascia, uh, black windows, doors, and steel trellis, and board form concrete for all site walls and a gray parapet roof with a total of four uh, skylights. Here's the proposed site plan with the location of the proposed trees for removal. There are 11 trees um, that are significant proposed for removal consisting of four coast live oaks, three valley oaks, and four coastal redwoods. The project arborist report has inventoried the trees and has detailed reasoning for removal as summarized in the staff report. And there are also 17 non-significant trees proposed for removal. <clears throat> Here again is the proposed site plan. Um, please note the proposed new driveway location, new plunge pool, new retaining walls around the main building and rear deck with the proposed trellis. All the new proposed site paths and impervious paving would be in compliance with the required impervious surface totals allowed for the site. Uh, the project proposes 3,547 square feet of new landscaping in most plantings are proposed natural groupings close to the house and includes areas marked as restoration to be seeded with native plants. The planting plan features a non mow lawn. A majority of the outer and rear property are proposed to be left natural and landscaping is proposed to be vegetated with predominantly native plants. The project proposes to utilize 74% of the maximum allowed water allowance. Here's the breakdown of the grading. The project proposes 885 cubic yard of soil movement subject to site development permit. As such, the final discretionary approval will be considered by the Planning Commission. However, the ASCC uh, will review it here at this meeting tonight. Uh, the amount of grading is proposed primarily to relocate the driveway. The proposed exterior and landscape lighting is identified here. All fixtures are compliant with the municipal code and staff recommended minor lighting reductions to be to the recessed lighting around the house and the applicant accepted the recommendations. This slide demonstrates the proposed exterior and landscape lighting. Notice of the public meeting was mailed to all property owners within a 300 feet of the, uh, the project site on September 3rd, 2021. To date, one comment has been received uh, raising concerns of the project and has been shared with the ASCC prior to this meeting. A second comment has been received just um, before the meeting itself um, in support of the project and can be read into the record. Um, staff was under the assumption that the applicant team was in contact with at least the immediate neighbors. However, based on the comments received from the immediate neighbor, such outreach may not have been sufficient to identify concerns to be raised earlier in the review process. Staff's recommended approval was based in the assumption that neighborhood outreach was received and considered. And after applicant presentation and public comments, the ASCC should consider the next best steps for project review. And that ends the staff presentation. Both staff and the applicant team are available for any questions by the ASCC. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Laura or Jake? Yes. Jane, um, go ahead. What 
steps are available to us if we consider that the um, neighbours comments haven't been taken into account on this project. So staff's recommendation would be to hear the applicants um, presentation and then to receive the public comments and then have a discussion amongst yourselves about what the appropriate steps would be. And we'd be happy to provide some ideas um, about how you might want to go forward. But we would encourage you to let that um, those steps happen first and then come back for discussion. Okay. And Laura, may I just come in and uh, ask if the uh, because this is a recommendation to the planning commission, uh, has there has this been put on the planning commission meeting yet? This has not been scheduled for planning commission yet. Okay. And so would the range of options available to us be the sort of what I would call the usual options, approval, approval with additional conditions, um, a uh, uh, request to return to us with uh, a list of potential changes. And then of course, there's always a denial, which I, I can't remember in my tenure having uh, taken that step. But my recollection is that they're sort of the normal options to us available. Yes, I think that, that the normal range of options that the ASCC would take are available. So this is a recommendation um, up to the Planning Commission. So it would be a recommendation for approval, um, approval with changes. Um, ASCC will sometimes ask the applicant team to go back and reconsider some items or redesign some items and bring them forward again. Um, there may be interest of the ASCC to go out for a site um, meeting at the site. If you feel like that would be warranted, staff could arrange that. So that full range that you've had in the past are all available to you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, uh, I have a question. Other commissioners. Yeah. Can you hear me? Is my, am I on? Yes, uh, Megan, you are. And then Kenny. Okay. Um, so this is maybe to Laura or Jake. Um, how long have the story polls been up? Four weeks. The story uh, polls have been up, uh, I believe, for a month prior to okay. this meeting. And, and within that month, there was not any questions from neighbors? Uh, there was inquiry from the uh, adjacent neighbor um, who waited to have the staff report and plans um, published prior to providing comment. So they've, so, actually, they've actually been up for a couple of months. And I've had conversations with most of my neighbors, including Leslie at Atham, explaining what was happening. And I, I sent an email earlier today um, that I got up on the roof and took photos of the windows that they were concerned about because I'm clearly concerned. I certainly did not spend six years designing this to upset anybody. So um, I took pictures and I did send it to the Planning Commission that shows windows pictures from all of the windows on the second floor, as well as the garage doors. And um, I'm happy to walk anybody through it, but. Um, right, we feel that maybe the uh, owner doesn't actually understand what's gonna be built. The fact that there's between the garage door and their house, there's a six foot mound of stuff between well, them. Let me just, uh, uh, sorry, let me just interrupt. There will be, after commissioners are done asking questions of staff, there will be an opportunity for uh, applicant presentation, and that would be a great time to address all these things. So if you could right. sort of take we'll, we'll be note quiet. of what you uh, what you want to communicate, I'll continue with um, commissioner questions of staff. And uh, let's see, Megan, were you still in progress? No, I just wanted to know what is the normal timing of story polls that we allow neighbors to view the site beforehand and it appears that this was at least a month or so beforehand that's all, that's all i wanted to know yeah okay. the normal the normal timing as long as the story polls are up before we send the public notice uh -huh. um so that is really the trigger for us so they're up any time between a month or more before the public notice or right before the public notice anything within that range is is typical for us great thank you right, thank more you questions for staff. kenny it looked like you had a question. Uh, yes. Um, the, the question is, is, is this a situation where 
as a part of the initial application, the applicants who, who were to have certified that they notified immediate neighbors. And and do we know if if that notification, if that's true, do we know if that notification was sent or received? So we ask applicants um, to reach out to neighbors. Um, and so they did let us know in this case that they reached out to them. I think the question is going to be whether that level of outreach is sufficient, you know, and that is something for the ASC. Okay, so it, it's not a question of whether or not that was such a notice was even provided. Um, I, I mean, I don't think that's a question. I think they did outreach to neighbors, um, but I don't know, you know, whether that was sufficient and resolve the issues. So we should give the applicant team a chance to speak to that too, I think. All right. Any other commissioner questions for staff? Nope. All right. We'll move on to the applicant uh, presentation. Anything you would like to say to us? responding to our questions or additional information on top of the uh, presentation that Jake made. It's all yours. So I'm the owner. Um, I've lived in town for 15 years and I've lived at this address for nine years. Um, I'm a designer and an interior architect and I work um, on residential projects and uh, lots in town um, and a lot in other areas, um, but I'm local and um, I have three kids that have all gone through Corte Madera and uh, Ormondale and all the other preschools and are now in surrounding schools. So this has been on my drawing board for about six years. I'm not an architect, so I hired an architecture firm on the East Coast that does prefab houses um, in the hopes that that would help me speed up the process, but clearly six years, it didn't help me. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it's really hard to make decisions for myself, much easier to make them for my clients. So I uh, grew up in an Eichler in Sunnyvale, and that style of house seems to be very typical in Portola Valley. I looked at lots of different styles, um, but when I bought the property, the house is in really, really terrible um, shape. It was built in the 50s beautifully. I've actually met the, the children that, moved, that grew up in the house. But it was remodeled by the last owners and they pretty much did it all themselves. Like the roof has no plywood on it and um, all of the trim on the exterior is pine and has moss growing on it and just falls off the house at all, at any, any time of the day or night. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a mess. Um, so my goal has always been to replace the house with something that would fit in the neighborhood and uh, fit in the community. And um, I'm in a lovely location, um, but most of my property is behind the house, the way they set the lot, the building plot. Um, so I've always had two goals, which the main one was always to be able to see the backside of the property. And then several years ago, PG&E and the town very nicely cut down about 1300 foot eucalyptus trees across the street from me. And I now have a view of the mountains, which I never had before. When I bought the house, I did not have a view, but the view is from my garage. Um, and so trying to balance both of those, moving the driveway around the back, and also taking advantage of the view, I flipped the entire plan from the garage on the west side to the garage on the east side. Um, and my goal was always to move as little dirt as possible, to use my um, landscaping and my, um, I'm part of the Westridge Garden Club and to use my knowledge from both my previous house in Portola Valley and this house to plant the plants that have done really well in the area. So I did, um, submit a landscape description, sort of walkthrough of my property. And I did walk the conservation committee through and they had comments which were helpful. Um, so I've placed the house, stepping down the hill, moving very little dirt. I have a, a, a lot of slope on my property, so I'm, I'm pretty limited on my square footage. It's not a huge house. It's a four bedroom house. I have three kids. Two of them will be gone in three years and the other one will follow in two years. Um, but my bedroom ends up on one end and then the living room, kitchen, dining room is one big room. There's a small, there's a family room, a mud room, a garage. And um, I tucked a little wine storage area underneath the stairs. So it's not a huge house and it's not, I don't consider it to be extravagant in any way. Um, Cause I think that's, anyway. Um, so I always wanted, you know, I've been very, um, 
moved by Sea Ranch and all of the wood houses around. And so my, my intention was always to do horizontal wood siding, um, which would help it look long and low, not tall. Um, and clearly in the last couple of years, I did start this six years ago, last couple of years, wood has become a serious issue. And I have spoken um, with my architect, Jeff, and my um, contractor, Sean, about using a um, pressure, um, Jeff, you'll have to um, tell me if I'm correct here, pressure treated, you're, you're on mute. Thermally modified wood, it's put in the kiln, heat it up, changes the chemical properties of the wood, makes it more resistant to rot, uh, fire, and pretty much everything, you know? So that's what we're discussing as the ash. Um, so um, that's that's what I've been looking at um, in the last in the last two years as I've been going through this with with clients as well. So um, I, I am deeply sorry that Anne and um, Leslie didn't feel comfortable enough to come to my house and talk to me about the problems. Um, I have talked to them both, Leslie, in much more detail about the house location and the driveway and what was going to be the next to their house in the last couple of years. And the story polls have been up for two months and um, nobody came to me and asked me anything. And I uh, sent out the information obviously too late for most people. Um, they happened to be going out of town, which I wasn't aware of. They set up a Zoom call on Friday afternoon. And then when I got on the Zoom call, they had canceled it. So um, they said that they were uh, overwhelmed with the drawings I needed some time to look over them and they didn't respond to me again until Sunday afternoon when they sent a, left me a message that they were sending a letter. And I think that I easily could have walked them through and I could have taken them on the roof. And I did this afternoon go over and take pictures from all the windows. So the windows that are face their house are um, my daughter's bathroom window, her closet window and the boy's bathroom windows. Um, then I went down to the garage, which is, at the elevation of the garage is at least three feet below their elevation. And there is a big hill right there with a huge oak tree on it. And they have um, a six foot fence, which is on their property and on my property, which I um, has been fine. It's not a big deal. And we have new trees growing in that area. So I sent you the pictures and I literally standing in the windows, I couldn't see their, their doors into their bedroom. I couldn't see anything. They have a fence and a garden. So I hope that that we can work that out because I certainly wouldn't have done anything to be a bad neighbor. Um, I understand their concern about the gravel on the driveway because we have a neighbor, a wonderful neighbor who lives across the street who has a long gravel driveway and we can all hear it every time she drives in and out, which is beautiful. But I can see that they wouldn't want it right next door to them. So that's not a big deal to change out. It's really not an issue. And, and they won't be able to see any light at the garage doors. And um, the garage doors that are installed these days are very quiet. So I'm not really concerned about the garage doors. Um, so I think we can work it out. I showed, I showed and then talked about this property in my house um, for the whole nine years I've lived on the property. And um, I did have a lot of very positive feedback. Um, so I, I just hope that, that that will be enough to make you guys find that it's an okay house. I think that's it. Thank you. Um, through the chair, I wanted to clarify um, staff received the pictures, but there wasn't time to forward them to the ASCC members. So um, I just wanted to make sure that that was clear to everyone. Um, if the ASCC wanted to see those pictures, I don't know if Elizabeth would be able to share. I, her. I can certainly share them if that would be of help. I, I, think, that would, I think that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. Let me get yeah. those up. You have them available, um? I, I do. I have them here. Let's see. Let me just pull up the email I sent. So give me a moment. Elizabeth, while you're doing that, yeah. um, so the gravel driveway, what do you propose to change that to be? Well, that's actually at the top of the rest of the driveway. Um, so 
it's just a small section. I, I really originally wanted to have, you know, like a nice country driveway, but um, because of the slope, it needs to all be concrete, but it'll be the same color as the dirt. So I'll just continue that in front of the garage um, and then into the little area in there. So I, I, that's what we would propose. I just continue the concrete, not all the way around the side. I would just do crushed gravel around the side, which is different than gravel. It's like what you walk on. Um, DG. It's yeah, DG, DG, which is what all my walkways are. And um, so, um, okay, let me share my screen. Hopefully these will be clear. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. Oh, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to let me do that. Um, Jeff, can you show them and I can talk them through? Yes, I can. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. Now that I put it away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Share screen. Uh, put it on this one. Uh, share. Can everybody see uh, the picture here? Yep. Yes. Yep. All right. Okay. So, so this one is the, is this the first one, Jeff? Yes, it's the first one on the list there. Room so from... If you were looking at my plans, in the southwest corner is my daughter's bedroom and bathroom. And that's the picture from. Can you make it any bigger, Jeff? I can make it bigger, but not to. Um... It may not be clear. So oh, it you won't can be the see... whole thing, but yeah. Can okay. you, everybody see that now? Yeah. So you can see this is a corner of my existing house, and which is now going to be driveway. And there's a hill, which is hard to see, and there are six foot fence. And that's their building on the on the far side. And you can see the very edge of the roof. Um, but when I was there, I, I couldn't see any doors. Um, and then can you go to the next picture? Yeah. So the next one is looking out. Um, that's out of the bathroom, I think, right? So yep, say well, the window in the sh yep, the window in the shower, right? Window in my son's shower. Yeah. So at, at that point you can't see anything um oh that's in the quinn shower and you there are even more trees here that are so i can't see anything and then the next picture is moving out the front window trying to look to the left out of her literally standing at her window looking to the left and i can't even see her house i can just barely see the side of the fence and at this point i'm you know 14 feet above the ground um, so this is out of my son's bedroom, which is in the southeast corner above the family room. And then the next two pictures, and I can't, I mean, I, I couldn't see anything. I can see the roof. And then it, the next two pictures, the next one is that, that orange line right there. Sorry. Sorry. That orange right line right there is the edge of the family room. So the building is two stories, but it's stepped back from the property line. Um, so that it's not a straight two-story wall right there. It is over at the garage, but not right there. And then the next picture is standing at the garage door, the westernmost garage door. So I am, I am at least three feet below their house now. And then you have that wall, that massive hill right there, which is over 10 feet high where the tree is, and then their fence. So I can't even see their house at that point. And then the next picture is just showing, I'm looking through my fence and I'm standing on the ground and you can see that the elevation of their house is several feet higher than mine. It's at least 36 inches higher. So that's, and, and I'm certainly happy to take any of you through the property and, and take them and walk through the property with them. I'd be happy to do that at any time. So that's it, that's, those are the pictures. Well, thank you very much. I think it was helpful looking at those photos. Um, Can I ask a quick question? Yes, um, and go ahead. The photos, if, if you could go up one photo. Yeah. Right here. Uh, uh, one, one more photo. Up. Not a problem. Please. I can keep going if you'd like. Um. I think I think it's it's lagging a bit. So um, uh, maybe one below this one that has the orange flagging on the roof. This well, all right. This one, 
the one I have in front of my screen has the orange flagging on the roof. But I've got yeah, like a. So if, if I'm recalling correctly, there's there's a couple pictures below that. The one below this one, it shows some chairs on a. That's yep. from the garage. Yeah. yeah, right there. This is from the garage. Yep. Okay. So if this is from the garage, is this kind of where the. Yeah. This this would be where the uh, um, headlights are pointing. And and so the level where these the chairs and table are on is the level that the cars are going to be at. Yeah. Correct. Um, that's the highest that the cars are going to be. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Other questions from commissioners. Well, can I ask a can I ask a um, a question to staff? Go ahead, Megan. What dictates a site meeting, and why were we not given the opportunity to have a site meeting for this? We just haven't restarted site meetings yet, um, so this would have been the first one. So, if you would like to have a site meeting for this one, we'd be happy to schedule that for you. Well, I'm, I'm not necessarily saying we need a site meeting for this at, at this point, but um, isn't there a way that we could have done smaller meetings? I mean, we, we've been to, you know, the Stanford Terrace Wedge project. We've had individual meetings on other projects with a small group of us. And I, I do think that if the neighbor had seen the perspective from this side, none of this would have been an issue. In, and in terms of ASCC going out to the site, we were just trying to use our best judgment about whether that was warranted or not. So in this case, you know, we didn't anticipate that this was an issue at the time that we were scheduling the meeting, so. Commissioners, I mean, don't you see that this would have been a, a great opportunity for well, i think i think we can get into that uh when we start our discussion i okay. want to take a public input before we do that okay. um, but yeah so let's leave that question on the table for discussion uh are there any other commissioner questions for the applicant or the, or staff okay commissioner Ryan, you have a question al jane looks like the answer is no nope well, I, I, I can ask another a question more directly. Um, uh, All right, Ken, go ahead. To, to the applicant, um, so, so had, had you explicitly invited um, all of the neighbors, the, all of the immediate neighbors to, to discuss the project with you? I, 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 the, what I got was that the answer is yes, but I just. So I, I walked around, I know several of the neighbors very well on the back side of me where my driveway is just moved in they just bought the house about two months ago i went over and introduced myself to them and told them what i was doing and the people behind me they all everybody everybody i have talked to every neighbor in the last several years more than once and as this got closer and closer carrie who lives to carrie rust who lives down the street stopped me in this road and said oh it looks like the pools are up are you going to show? And I said, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to um, have people over. And I did have people over and the polls have also been up and I'm also a very open person. I, and I have talked to Leslie walking down the street more than one time. And um, I, I mean, we're, we're in pretty friendly neighborhood. So yes, I didn't show them my drawings six months ago. I didn't show them six years ago. But I've been talking about it, and I've been very clear about what I was doing. And um, nobody had any anything negative to say at all. And I, I think this is just a. I think that if I had shown the drawings to them earlier, and maybe I had should have gone over and knocked on their door with the drawings, and I should have done it a week ago, then we wouldn't have had we wouldn't have this problem. I think if they came to the site, they would understand. I hope that. Um, that yeah, it's their concerns, I, I don't think are, are concerns. And if they are concerns, then we'll, I'm, I'm here and open to deal with them. Right, but the three things that they actually complain about, the location of the garage and the guest parking, well, you know, the garage has pretty much got to stay there. <laughs> but the, uh, 
we can't address all the the light and the noise spillage by the uh, the type of uh, the noise from the uh, from the the driveway is easy to, is an easy fix already, and the light spillage as you can see those lights aren't really you know they're not really facing anything that they can see from their their house. Um, and um, the driveways themselves, so the cars showing lights into their thing. Again, there's a huge hill. block by the hill that's stopping from get there. If it really made them happy, I'm sure there's some kind of bush because Elizabeth loves plants. As a matter of fact, it was killing her to remove a lot of the trees, but she understood that because of the dampness in the site that it's best to, to clear it out some to get the uh, light in there. But we could even put a screen over there if that that would make them happier for uh, any any worry about the uh, the lights. Um, and so there we go. Like we've really addressed those issues that they've brought up in their in their um, in their um, letter. Letter. So there's that. Um, as far as the rest of the thing, I don't know how you guys can, unless you've been staring at stuff for a while, you're going to have to stare at a lot of stuff to get a, a handle on the rest of the things that are going on the site with the um, the landscaping. But the lighting on the exterior is pretty much minimum in order to um, light up the pathways that uh, we have so you can enjoy the site as you're walking around at night. You know, it's not it's not heavily lighted, minimized. Uh, as much as we could. Thank you. Kenny, does that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. All right, commissioners, any other questions? Okay. Uh, before we go to commissioner discussion, I'll open the public hearing on this item and invite any members of the public who would like to address us to do so now. And uh, Laura will call on you when she sees your hand raised. Well, first, we have Leslie. Leslie, welcome, and please go ahead. Hi, I'm Leslie Latham, um, and with me is uh, Ann Wenger. We live here at 150 Grove Drive, um, and we've been uh, very happy neighbors and members of the Grove Drive community for 22 years. Um, thank you all for uh, allowing us to, for giving us the opportunity to, to speak and just to sort of communicate some of our concerns. Um, it sounds like you have had a chance to look at the letter that uh, we wrote and sent through last night. Um, and so I, I, I wanna just touch on some of the comments that have been made by, especially by Elizabeth, um, whom I consider a neighbor and a friend. Um, you know, she and her three kids have been very considerate neighbors. So um, this process and the way that we were surprised um, was a surprise to me. It's not what I would have expected. But um, anyway, given the timing, we chose the route that we did to make a, a formal letter. Um, so I'd like to address the three concerns that we have um, and, and also just return to the process for a moment. Um, the three concerns are listed in really priority order. Um, and, I'll, and I'll list them as concerns because when we finally saw the plans on Thursday uh, late afternoon, we actually didn't, we were surprised primarily by the location of the garage. I might disagree with Elizabeth on a couple of things with respect to the timing, but I definitely do not disagree with her that when I'm out or Anne is out walking our dog Cody and we meet her in the neighborhood and she gleefully tells us that the easement for our driveway, um, for her driveway on our property, wow, that's finally gonna be, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have, we'll have a, a, an opportunity to cure that because she's going to be moving the driveway. And, you know, we saw the story polls and, and I have a few pictures as well. So um, we, we did speak about it, but I think the thing that really surprised me and has led to the letter and our concerns is the fact that we, 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 didn't, we never heard any description of the garage being moved around to the, uh, what I'll call sort of the back of the house, which is closer to our property and farthest away from the street. 
And the impact of that, we just don't know. Um, because we just saw it, we just saw it. So our, we're coming at this from perspective of wanting to understand what the impact is. Okay, I, I want that to be clear. We're, we're, we're happy that already there's some understanding that what our first issue was, the noise that's created by having uh, gravel um, uh, uh, after the, the hammerhead driveway, uh, the driveway hammerhead sort of converts to gravel, which then comes around and 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 uh, leads to guest parking. That you know, given our house is it's thirty feet or so from our property, from our house, from our master bedroom suite, over to our uh, privacy fence, and then you know perhaps another thirty feet or so um, to Elizabeth's, or to probably to the driveway. I can't really tell. Look, maybe it's up to 100 feet, but you know the driveway traverses that, and that's that's going to have some impact. But we don't know what it is. So I hope I hope you understand that we felt it was legitimate to raise the question because it was the first time we saw it. We just spent a lot of time looking at the plans, and that's that's what we wanted to do. Um, so the, the other thing to note is that you know our house is a 1954 adobe house. It stays nice and cool. Uh, the bedrooms, the master bedroom suite, has been remodeled in 2020. But um, you know, we keep the windows open um, and cars coming in and out of that driveway um, and onto the gravel and maybe into the guest parking. Um, you know, it's, it's likely to carry and we don't know how much, but that was our question. That's, that's what we're asking. I, ho I hope that makes sense. Um, the three concerns we had were raised in that priority order. The question of the light spillage from the second story was our third priority. Elizabeth, I'm so sorry you had to climb up on your roof to take those photographs. It gets me nervous that you were doing that, but I appreciate you're doing that. Um, and uh, we also have some photos we, where we um, you know, took them from within the house. Um, and we, we, we just don't know what the effect would be. Uh, we can see with the story polls, and we have pictures of that. But uh, we, as I said, that's our, that's our, third, um, uh, that's our, that's our third concern. So uh, just to be back for a moment on the, um, on the process, I, I just wanted to clarify, uh, Jake, when I sent through um, my email to staff on, I think it was the 26th of August, and yes, the story polls had been up, and yes, I had talked with Elizabeth about, uh, you know, the property um, at a very cursory level, never talking about the, the driveway or the garage. Um, but when I sent that email through on the 26th, I was sort of wondering what was the process for coming to understand um, the full design plans and then the timing for providing input, right? So that was my question back on the 26th. And um, uh, I was not waiting, uh, as Jake said, just to correct you with all respect here, um, for the official package to come out. I just wanted to know, when, when do I need to provide comments? And that was when I started to contact Elizabeth to say, you know, maybe, maybe we should see those, see those plans. I sort of expected that we would have been asked if um, maybe earlier in the process, if, if we would um, have, have wanted to see something more. Um, but uh, that was when I started that dialogue with uh, Elizabeth via email saying, you know, can we now talk about this? Um, and by the time Elizabeth, um, sent me the, the, not just the landscape plans on Thursday, but um, the, the design plans on a little later in the day on Thursday, we just needed to dive in because we knew that the meeting was on Monday. So um, that was the reason I figured, I don't know what to ask you at this point. Um, so that was why we canceled the meeting that we set up. Um, so anyway, that's, that's a little bit about the, about the process. I'd, I'd like to just sort of step back for a moment because I've been talking and see if that makes sense um, to you. Oh, uh, thank you, Leslie. Um, we have, uh, first of all, let me ask if there's anybody else from the public that would like to speak. Um, I'm Suki Air. And I don't know if I'm muted. I we can hear you. Oh, we can hear oh, you fine. Um, I live across the street um, from 214, so directly opposite. 
um, I've got the Fathmans on um, up the street a little bit. And I just want to say from our perspective, um, when there will not be leaves, I sent an email to, to this effect. When there are not leaves, we will see the building. Um, but compared to what we see now, it is going to be such an improvement. And um, Elizabeth has put a lot of time and energy into this, um, the design of it. It's not just a quick and dirty, lot of lot of effort that I know over the last at least two or three years, she's been iterating and iterating to get the placement correct and the aesthetic correct and to be appropriate for Portola Valley. And um, I we just, we support her in it. And I think it'll be a great addition uh, to our street. And I think that it, it will definitely improve the value of all of our properties. And um, Elizabeth is very modest about what she does for a living, um, but she works with very high-end clients and her design aesthetic is really terrific. So um, that's why Ted and I, you know, we've looked at the story polls, we've looked at the plans and um, we just think it's gonna be a great addition to the street. So um, I just wanted to, in case you hadn't heard my, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. And as far as the driveway, I will love it not having that driveway there because we have a gravel driveway and people are constantly spinning out. And I can't tell you how many times we've replaced, we both of us, Elizabeth and me have replaced our mailboxes um, because people, insist on turning around right at our driveways. So I will love to not have her driveway there. Hmm. So right. that's it. Thank you for your comments. Anybody else from the public? Um, there are not any other hands up, just um, as a confirmation that um, that was the other comment letter that we got that Jake mentioned in his presentation that we could read into the record if necessary. Um, so that everyone just knows that that closes that loop. So that was Suki's comment um, that we didn't have a chance to distribute. So um, so there are no new hands raised from members of the public. Okay, well, I'd like to go back to um, uh, Leslie's, um, and Leslie, it sounded to me like what you were suggesting at the end of your comments was that you'd like to hear some feedback from the applicants about um, whether your concerns are being taken into account. Um, I was, uh, I guess we haven't quite got, well, let me back up for a moment. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, uh, thank you for some extensive comments. And uh, if I heard you correctly, uh, I think one of your greatest concerns is really not being, uh, not having a good understanding of how or if this is going to have much effect on you and your, uh, uh, yes. on your property. Um, so uh, I, th I think we all heard that. And during our discussion, we can talk about um, what, if anything, we can do about that. Um, so if you are satisfied for the moment that we did hear you, uh, what I'd like to do is close the public hearing and then start a discussion amongst the commission members. And if you're comfortable with that, then that's the direction we'll go. Yes. Uh, Great. All right, well, I will then close the public hearing on this and uh, invite commissioners to offer their thoughts and their comments. And why don't we start with Megan this time? Hi, sorry, my cat's moving my there you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's Tiger right there. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> A big orange boy. Huh? So my takeaway right now, and I'm gonna start just not necessarily on this project, but is that emphasis on how important site meetings are. Um, you know, many of us here have um, history and an, um, an education in reading site plans and grading, and that is our specialty we bring to this. And, and as it appears, Elizabeth obviously has that as well in her architect team. But 
a neighbor may not know that. So when they look at a plan, it's it's not a 3D plan for them. They don't see what's actually happening. And they just see my, this is my fence line. This is the property. And it, it's the service that we can do at the town of Tola Valley invite everyone in to walk the site and and see exactly what it feels like what it looks like and i i don't know if it's really the responsibility of the owner of the property to you know make all these copies of plans and put it out there maybe that's something we want to make sure we tell our um, applicants in the future to do but that is not a standard procedure um, of course, we want to encourage everyone to talk to your neighbors, but um, I have driven by the site, obviously, today I did that once um, this letter came in, just to see what I could see with these story poles. Um, and it appears that um, the neighbor concerns over the gravel driveway absolutely makes sense, and that will, can be mitigated. Um, garage doors these days are so silent that I sometimes worry about my pets even not even knowing the garage door is closing on them you know so so I don't think that that's a problem the light spill of course can be addressed and we can talk about blinds and whatnot and um you know if their bathrooms or closets or whatnot they're usually not left on um but but you know seeing this with the car turnaround and the headlights it appears that there really would never be an issue there. And sadly, these neighbors were really worried about that. And I get that. And and that's not their fault for being worried about it. They just didn't know. And they never had the opportunity to walk the site as our site meetings would provide that opportunity. We even, you know, all of us know here that we even have gone to neighbor's house and looked out of their bedroom windows or their decks or whatnot. And it's a, it's an invaluable opportunity for everyone to come on board to support each other. I think this prop this this proposal is is quite beautiful and it's such an incredible improvement not only to this property but to the neighbors around it and the property values. Um, I, I know um, Elizabeth has three children and this is a family home. Um, I think her materials, obviously the, the, the siding is something that, that we don't like to see right now because we're so scared about what it's gonna look like for insurance purposes and fire danger. Um, but this treated material maybe is a good buffer in sense, but I can go on board with it since we don't have anything in place right now to suggest otherwise. Um, I think the landscaping is lovely. I think the lighting is minimal. Um, I, I recognize that the driveway placement is a smart move where it was very steep and, and appears that it was part of another neighbor's as well. So that that works well in taking advantage of the views, which we should allow all of our property owners to do. Um, but I, I think I'm just more riled up about the lack of site meeting, uh, which would have been so beneficial for all parties on this one. That's Thank it. you, Megan. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, somebody in the background there. Uh, Jane, would you like to offer some comments? Yes, um, I was just looking for pictures of the garage doors because I was a bit concerned about whether or not they had glazing at the top because the, the design of the house does have a lot of glazing and I was thinking about the lighting inside the garage. Anyway, um, I echo Megan's concerns about the lack of a visit uh, not being beneficial to all neighbours. It would, it would have been a good idea in this instant. And also an earlier notification of the to the neighbours of the ancillary um, buildings uh, in addition to the main one. Um, I was concerned with, I am concerned with the skylights, window coverings, lights village. Um, uh, I do think the driveway is better situated in the new plans. Um, I read with, uh, I agree with conservation, we did the odor cedar, the acacia, um, and removing the olives and the topped redwoods. 
Um, I would like to see some more native species um, planted, but I it's the drive, I think the fact that we got this memo concerned so late in the day, I, I, I'm split, I suppose, on, on what we should do next, because I, I don't like to see either the applicant upset or the neighbours upset. So I'd like to see how we can work this, work this out between us. Um, Understandable. Understandable. Yeah. So well, when when uh, spoken, I am going to offer a suggestion. So we'll we'll see how that goes. But I'm very interested in hearing uh, everybody else's thoughts too. Yeah. Um, Kenny, do you have some comments um, to offer? Yes. Um, so I I mean I think um, I appreciate both the applicants and the neighbor. Um, uh, taking the time during this meeting um, to explain um, uh, explain their thinking and um, and uh, with regards to the the questions that the neighbor had, putting aside um, the process um, uh, with this this sort of first order of business um, uh, being whether or not we're moving the project um, forward with an approval. Um, uh, the, the question of the location of the garage, um, in my mind, within the easements um, is to a first order uh, acceptable. Um, and, and there are reasons behind that. Um, uh, good reasons behind that in terms of, of what those easement distances mean um, and and what they're based on. Um, uh, I think it's fair to say, in particular, with a move towards electric vehicles and, and generally how, how vehicles have changed um, since these easements were made, um, uh, the, the sort of the baseline noise impact from the the cars engines themselves um is, is actually going to be pretty low within um within what's allowed in our easement um in addition to that um uh my reading of the the topography numbers um the uh the the grading information that's provided in the plans um, together with the pictures that were provided um, is that um, beyond that, uh, the impacts are even further reduced. Um, so my instinct is to, to say to Leslie that um, it's understandable to raise this concern about the impact of the garage, but the, the elevation difference um, and its existence inside of the, the easement um, Suggests that there will be a very low impact for you, um, uh, and um, regarding the gravel noise, uh, that the the applicant has already offered to um, to replace the use of gravel there. Um, uh, I think both indicates um, her willingness to resolve it, um, uh, and and provides a solution to that concern. Um, and I think the, the light village insofar as um, window coverings and the lighting fixtures themselves are conforming um, to our design guidelines, I think especially also um, with in mind the elevation difference involved um, will is something that um, we can accept. Um, beyond that, um, I, I, we have to say, just out of concern for fellow neighbors um, and for the neighborhood, um, that there is a difference between um, fire resistant materials, including modified wood and non-combustible materials, 
um, and that difference will be a difference of policy. Um, we think in the not too distant future um, in town uh, and that the reasons behind that are, are really, really important. Um, and so that would go for the wood siding as well as, I, if I recall correctly, rubber roofing is combustible um, as well. And so that would also end up being non compliant. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's, that's what I recall. Um, and so, again, the, do, those, we couldn't take those as reasons not to push the project, not to approve the project, because we don't have a policy in place regarding that. But um, we don't want uh, applicants to come to us later on and say, our insurance is now unaffordable. Why didn't you tell me? Um, <laughs> So that's all the comments I have. Thank you, Kenny. Al, I think you're next. All right. Um, so I I think that the uh, the proposal that Elizabeth has brought forward is is really stunning. I mean, I, th I think that the architecture looks outstanding. Um, I think that it's great to see such a innovative design that is reasonable size, modest height. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot about this that I think is really well done. Um, I think that moving the driveway location makes a lot of sense. You know, now it will also access the guest house. Um, I, I think that uh, the lighting plan looks quite reasonable. Um, the wood panel siding, I'm not really familiar with the thermally modified uh, material. I hope that uh, it keeps its properties for a long time, or I think that there will be insurance issues. I think I did see that there's a wood deck in the rear of the house. Uh, I think that it would make sense to think twice about whether or not you really want to have a wood deck. Um, I, I, thought, I thought that the landscaping plan was absolutely outstanding. Uh, really, a, a lot of thought went into it. Um, you know, it's kept close to the house. Lots of the lots going to be left natural. Um, some of the landscaped areas are not even irrigated. It's good plant palette. Uh, cleaning up the trees makes a lot of sense. And I, I thought that there was good uh, responses to the conservation committee comments. And the water usage is good. Um, I, I think that the issue with uh, the neighbors. Um, you know, it, it's really too bad because if we didn't have that, we'd be celebrating this as, as a really exemplary project. Um, but, but I think that the neighbor's concerns are quite valid. Um, in a lot of ways, I think that Megan's comments on, it, you know, a site, a site meeting would, would have helped to alleviate a lot of these issues. Um, you know, what I'd like to see us do is is basically the next step on this is really to go to the planning commission. It's not a, a final decision for us. So I'd like to see us do something like, you know, give it our contingent approval, but then still have a site meeting where we pull together the uh, ASCC and perhaps even the planning commission uh, if they're interested, and then also the neighbors and, and just, consider some of the sight line issues. I mean, what we've seen is I don't think that there are gonna be big issues, but uh, if there are, it would give us an opportunity to say, oh yeah, well, we need a little bit of screening here, a little bit of screening there. Um, and I, I think that's really what it's gonna come down to is, is there a little bit of screening needed? Because, you know, Elizabeth's already conceded that uh, she's happy to just use concrete uh, rather than gravel. So I think that that, that issue goes away. And, and I really don't, see the garage doors or the cars being too noisy as, as Kenny highlighted. Um, so, so yeah, my, my proposal would be that we'd, uh, um, you know, as a group say that we are in improvement, uh, we, we approve of this, but um, contingent on having a, a site meeting and then, uh, and, you know, just give uh, the neighbors and the owner and the ASCC members one more chance to, to look at this on site. Thanks, Al. Well, um, my uh, thoughts are very much along the line, of, which is that this is an excellent project. Um, um, 
I don't think I have any different concerns from anybody else. The wood decking and wood siding, uh, currently allowable if you get your uh, building permit application in before the uh, local building ordinance changes, which will be within a few months, I believe. Uh, but uh, wood decking is not going to be allowed pretty soon. And again, you're, I, th I believe the decking is going to be close to grade. So there might be other options that um, wouldn't be uh, outside the budget. Uh, qualitatively different, yes. Um, I've looked at the skylight question. My sense is that the orientation of them is not uh, going to create a light spill problem. Um, first of all, it doesn't look like they're in areas that will be typically illuminated at night, that the skylights really will be used mostly for uh, providing light to otherwise internal dark rooms that uh, need it during the day. Uh, and the garage doors, at least in the uh, illustrations, do not have uh, a, a, lit, uh, a glass panel in them. Uh, as, as Jane knows, I think everybody here has heard me caution people about that, given the way sometimes garages are used for uh, electric chargers, which actually can create a kind of an annoying phenomenon where uh, glass in garage doors uh, flashes like an emergency beacon at night without the homeowners realizing it's happening. Uh, but all that said, I, I, I do like the, uh, the project very much. I think it, it meets the design guidelines. It's very thoughtfully uh, put together. But I am a little concerned about the process here. And, uh, you know, clearly uh, we have not had a public site meeting, a public meeting as a, a site meeting that uh, other people are invited to attend since the beginning of the shelter in place in mid-March of 2020. So it's been a year and a half. Uh, and I can understand staff's uh, reluctance to get us going again on that. But I do think that we have an opportunity here to have a site meeting that will serve the purpose that site meetings always do. It'll better inform us about some things we may not be able to visualize and an opportunity for neighbors to uh, see it from the perspective of the, uh, the new residents and, and for us to perhaps visit any neighbors that would like us to. Um, here's my thought. We have uh, a very light agenda, if any agenda at all, for our next meeting on the, at the 27th of this month, two weeks away. The Planning Commission review of this project has not yet been scheduled, and I know that, that their agendas are uh, relatively busy, so it's not likely to be delayed if we uh, hold off our final consideration and recommendations of this project until the 27th of September. And what I'm hoping is that there's sufficient time between now and then to schedule both a, uh, a site meeting and to put this on the agenda for the 27th. Uh, and I don't think that there's really any need to ask the applicant to change any plans or um, really make any modifications. I mean, that's what usually holds up a very quick turnaround for an X review is the time it takes to revise something, turn it in, get it distributed and so on. So if it's, if it's possible to get both a site meeting and get this on the agenda for the 27th, that's what I'd like to see us do. And Laura, is something like that possible? Yes, it definitely would be. And how much public notice is required for uh, a site meeting and for this agenda? Is it a, a day notice? We would need to notice it this week so we could do that for the 27th. Uh -huh. um, is it even possible to, to just have two ASCC members and some neighbors come? Because I think it's just a landscape screening issue at this point. I would say yes, if, if that were say a condition of approval, 
But since this whole kind of an open application has to receive the uh, recommendation or approval from us, I think that keeping the public process open so that any member of the public that wants to see it, any neighbor that wants to see it from the property is welcome to do that, have their comments recorded, and for a, um, a quorum of us to attend also. I would like to see it. And uh, looks like Kenny has a thought on the subject too. Go ahead, Kenny. Yeah, I wonder if we can just quickly ask Leslie, um, if, if her concerns have been met or not over the course of this discussion that we've had already. We still don't have one. Okay, well, that's, that, that's a fair question. And I would say that if, um, if Leslie's concerns have been completely addressed and she doesn't feel the need for a site meeting, then uh, that would change my thinking somewhat. Uh, so, yes, uh, let, yeah, Leslie, what do you think? Would you like to have a publicly noticed site meeting where you have an opportunity to interact with us and the applicant and to uh, view these conditions up close or um, do you feel okay about it at this point? Yeah, I know uh, we would very, very much appreciate your time, Elizabeth's time, everyone's time to do that. And if we can do it in a way that uh, we can hear what was said today, but we've learned a lot. We still think there's some open issues, um, but we, you know, our intention is not to derail this project. Um, it's just to understand more and see whether there are things that we can, that we can do that will, that will, you know, address our concerns. So I think it would be great. I have a list that's a little longer than Nagan's of, uh, I don't think it's just about, you know, tweaking the landscaping, um, but uh, yes. I would very much appreciate that. All right. Well, that's uh, that's my thought on this. Jane, did you have another uh, comment to make? Yes, I, mean, I was just thinking that um, things like lights fill, I mean, Elizabeth could right. say whether or not she was going to do certain types of blinds that came down at a certain time of night, which might alleviate some of the concerns about light spill or with skylights. So. I mean, that would be quite a simple one for Elizabeth to look at, you know, that might help with- um... you want to respond? I can tell you what we're doing. Okay. Please. So, yeah, go those, ahead. Uh, those are in my 13-year-old daughter's bedroom and I can guarantee that she will have blinds on her, um, uh, uh, sheer blind, if not more than that on her windows. And the other two are in the other bathrooms. So they have blinds and the rest of the house, all the big windows have automatic blinds, including my daughter's room, which faces sort of towards the neighbors. Um, they all have automatic blinds that will come down. Right. Okay. So that kind of information for the neighbors would be, would be helpful. And, and, and the skylights, the reason I'm putting skylights in is because I lived in a house on, um, Lysandra that had a 1950s house and the wall went straight up and the skylight was sitting at the wall and you never had to turn the lights on during the day. And so by putting in skylights, I'm hoping to you know, reduce energy and that's why I put them in a bunch of internal rooms. So we use less, less lighting. Okay. And I am happy anytime to walk anyone through that would like to. And if possible, I'd love to get it on the 27th because I'm already in a rental and I'm paying for it and I'm just going through money like crazy. So I'd really love to get this approved if you guys all like it and we could meet up and that would be fantastic. Great. Well, um, breaking tradition, I'm actually gonna make a motion. <laughs> usually, <laughs> usually I invite someone else to do it, but I'm gonna make a motion and see if it gets any uh, And And I'll just preface it by saying that it appears to me that if we uh, hold off on our final recommendations to the Planning Commission until the 27th of this month, that that will not affect the project schedule. It won't delay the submission of these plans to the building department or the plan or the Planning Commission's review 
of this project. So since we have that opportunity and with what I feel is a, a minimal uh, or really negligible uh, cost impact in terms of plan revisions and resubmittals on the applicant, I think this is really uh, an opportunity that we shouldn't pass up. So I'm going to move that we, uh, you know, and our, 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 our positive comments about this project are, are in the record. So uh, just to make it clear that um, along with the neighbors, we're not talking about derailing this project, but I would propose that we uh, hear this project again on our agenda on our meeting of the 27th and that prior to that time we have a publicly noticed site meeting it'll be the first one in a year and a half for us all i would love to see you all i've not actually met kenny in person yet mm. uh, me neither so uh, <laughs> it would be the first time that all of us are together in the same place at the same time and i i, I would like that too so um that's my motion that we uh, bump this to the 27th, we get a site meeting in the meantime, and that the applicant take our comments and discussion into account if they feel moved to uh, think about some relatively modest changes and describe those to us at the site meeting, that that would be sufficient for me to uh, then uh, be able to make final recommendations to the planning commission. So I've made the motion. Is there I'm happy to second that. Thank you all. Any other discussion on the motion? All right, we'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is that everyone? Kenny, yep. in here. okay. Any as opposed? As long as this is not going to hold up this project. That's that's my understanding of the current schedule. It's not actually on the planning commission schedule yet. Because uh, this project so, is-, is Could, could we get a tentative uh, planning schedule appointment? I know it's like a month or two out. So if like, you just kind of slip us in for sure. whatever the next well, one would uh, be. I, uh, and I wouldn't be opposed at all to this uh, being placed on the planning commission schedule yes. Yes. pending our input. Um, I don't see any reason to delay uh, getting it on their agenda. But, but I'm great. confident that that's not going to happen in the next two weeks. When would the well, next one be, Laura? When would the we'll, next we'll take this feedback into account when we look at the schedule. So the planning commission agenda has a lot more complexity to it because of the scale of the projects that we have coming forward to planning commission. So I'll, I'll be mindful of these comments that you're giving and try to come up with a schedule that does not create any delay, but creates the process steps that you want to see. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. So have we finished voting? Or, or, or is there any other discussion? Would anybody like to vote against it? All right. I think we have a unanimous yes vote. Yeah, so I, I think that we have staff has clear direction um, about what you'd like to see. We've got some logistical things to work through. So um, we'll be in touch with everyone over email to work those things out. So everyone just please um, tune into that as we're working out those details. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. Elizabeth, very much. Sorry for the uh, extension of all this, but you're going to get your wish and see us all wandering around your property. In the <laughs> Great. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. And, uh, and thank you for a wonderful proposal, by the way. I feel like a little kid getting my first A. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think we're done with agenda item three. So Let's go back and see what we, oh, yeah. yeah, I think we're all done with that. So what we have left are commission reports and staff reports. Uh, so I'll start item number four and ask my colleagues if you have been involved in any project reviews or ASCC business in the last, since the last meeting. 
Yeah. Um, Al and I went up to Firethorn, you know, off of Los Trancos. Right. That project that's been going on for like four years. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we helped them decide where to place some screening trees. Um, and th there's a long process there because the Alpa or sorry, the Los Trancos Road tree removal has not really happened, but we did place some trees where we thought they would be best suited. Anything to add, Al? No, no, I, I think you captured it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that, that part of that project is done now. Yeah. <laughs> that part. <laughs> we'll, we'll, get to, uh, we'll get to other parts in a moment. Right. Yeah. Uh, anybody else have uh, reports? Megan, Kenny? Well, uh, Dave, did you right. end up doing nine Willowbrook, Hillbrook? Yes, I'll, I'll, yeah, do you want to, you want to mention Hillbrook and I'll, I'll make a comment too. Right. Um, well, I don't know what we agreed because I didn't see you, <laughs> but um, we reviewed the um, 99 Hillbrook plans because they're going to be doing them in two phases. The first phase is going to be the pool house and the pool and some landscaping. And then the second phase is going to be where they change the name to be attached to the house rather than away from the house. Um, but we we did go through that with Jake and make some suggestions, um, and that was that was as far as I thought it gone at the moment. All right, I'll I'll pick it up from there. Um, the uh, project, as originally approved, included an uh, I believe it was a structure that was destined to become an ADU. Um, that's now uh, a pool house, so it's um, I'll just say it's reviewable. A different different process. That plus the landscaping revisions uh, was something that uh, Jake brought to us, to uh, Jane and me, in the last uh, week or so. It was the beginning of last week, I believe. Um, I think, uh, from what I understand from Jake, Megan, and I had some similar concerns about the uh, quality exposure of the pool and uh, patio area to the, to the trail area. It's elevated above the trail. It doesn't look like there's going to be much screening. It's really more of a privacy question for the owners than it is protecting the public from watching people in the pool. But uh, we did raise that issue. Um, the, there were some questions about the lighting. There are some steps that descend to that area that will be visible from offsite. Um, and looking at it, the, the step lights are mounted very low to the steps. Uh, they're very low lumens, although I asked to see if they could be reduced a little bit. Um, and I really don't see an alternative from a safety standpoint of having uh, the step lights that they're suggesting uh, they were fairly minimal. I think there's one light for every three or four steps. Um, that may just be something that we can't really mitigate. Um, but other than that, I think the, uh, the proposals, the proposed changes were uh, consistent with the guidelines. Um, so Jake is going to take our comments back to the applicant um, and we'll hear what happens from there. Um, I've also been looking at 40 Firethorn. Hmm. And I'm sorry, through the chair, there seems yes. to be some audio feedback. Does anyone yes, have two? Sounds, sounds two, like there's some cross talk from a radio. Does anyone have two devices running at once, maybe? Or can we try everyone who's not talking, maybe try muting for a while and see if that. Sorry. OK, I don't hear it now. Um, uh, 40 Firethorn. So it um, is apparently going through a number of revisions, some of them modest, some of them uh, perhaps more uh, profound. 
Uh, I've only looked at modest things so far, like uh, change to stucco color, uh, which appeared to me to be just fine. Uh, it was still within the uh, uh, reflectivity range that we allow uh, a relatively modest change to the stucco color. Uh, but I understand from, from Carol that there may be some other things coming up to review as well. Uh, so I'll, if so, and, I, and if I review them, I'll report on them next time. Uh, also 17 Redberry, uh, which is still in progress, but uh, approaching its uh, final inspections has asked for some changes, exterior color, um, some use of synthetic turf that's incorporated within the driveway area. Um, and uh, after I reviewed the changes that they're proposing, uh, I went ahead and approved them. Um, of course, we're not big fans of synthetic turf, but it's in a high wear area. It's decorative. It's not particularly visible from anywhere off site, and it won't require the use of water. So uh, it seemed like a logical place to me to use it, and it's relatively small quantities. It's not like an artificial lawn or something. Um, and I think that's all that I participated in that I worked on over the last couple of weeks. Um, yes, I think that's correct. Unless Laura can think of anything else that I've looked at. No, I think that does it. Okay. All right, any, any questions from anybody to anybody? All right, I'll um, open the public hearing on this agenda item and see if there's anybody from the public that would like to comment. And I do not see any. All right, close the item and move on to item five, staff report. Uh, I do not have any specific staff report for you tonight. Wow, okay. Uh, is there any discussion of that? So, well, did we have anything else scheduled for the 27th? Um, no, nothing was confirmed for the 27th. So I have not double checked with the planners. I would normally do that tomorrow. Okay. All right. And there is one um, hand up from the public. Yes, I was just about to open the public hearing on the lack of a staff report. So <laughs> please, uh, please go ahead and be recognized. Um, Mar Marcy, Marcin. Hello. Uh, I'm Marcin Powoski from Stonegate Road. Um, I wanted to, this is not really a comment on the lack of report. I just wanted first to thank the commission and the building director for the work for the community. And I wanted to say we are very grateful that neighbors received a mail notification about the ASCC meeting covering the permit for our neighbors, Wilson's, more than a week before the ASCC se session. And I wanted to ask if neighbors of the, in the vicinity of the Spring Ridge Winery could receive such a notice more than a week before the session for the Spring Ridge, having the full week to plan the time, read the materials is tremendously helpful and we really, really appreciate it. And especially given this cap has been on hold for so long and we're always sort of waiting where, where, when this will be going on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Laura, do you have any uh, response to that? Any any comment? Um, yes. So when we send a notice, it will always be um, at least 10 days before the meeting. The postal mail has slowed down those notices recently. We've actually been trying to get them out a little bit earlier. Um, so they'll always be 10 days, but we're trying to do them earlier now. In regards to Spring Ridge, the Neely Winery Project, we also have a very extensive email list and we'll be emailing all of those people directly. Um, so there's a lot of residents that are already on it, but if any additional residents wanna be on the email list, they can email me directly and ask, excuse me, ask to be on that list. And then they'll get that list on that same day. So that could be an extra couple of days notice as well. And then everything will be posted onto the website um, when that project goes forward. Do you have a, a, any rough idea of when that one's coming forward, Laura? 
Um, we are getting much closer on that one. It could definitely um, be on the ASCC agenda in October. So people should keep their eyes open for it in October. Okay, thank you. And I'll have to plan my vacation accordingly. <laughs> one way or another. All right. Can we all wave at the baby now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh. Uh, I'll close item five, open item six, uh, approval of the minutes. Has everyone had a chance to review them? Yes. Yes. Any corrections, questions? I didn't have any. They're great as usual. Yep. 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 Staff, oh. you've got a very fine record on the minutes. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> all right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of August 9th, 2021 as written. Is there a second? I can see yeah. Al's mouth moving. Good. Sounds, it looks like there are several I'll seconds. Second. <laughs> All right. Make sure everyone, your audio is turned on so that we can uh, take a vote. Kenny, I see you're muted. There you go. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we have a six vote? Good. Yeah. All right. Any opposed? Seeing none, that passes 5-0. We'll close that item. And thank you very much, commissioners, for uh, your participation today and members of the public who joined us and the applicant teams. This was a, a good meeting. Yeah. All right. Thanks a bunch. And uh, hopefully we'll get a chance in the next couple of weeks to see each other in person. Would love that. Great. All right. Yeah. He's great. Good night, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.